Hi Sid. Hello Shikhan. So what's happening? How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? When did you come back? Uh, like, uh from where? USA. It's been it's been a year and a half at this point. Okay, okay, okay. I came back last June. Good, 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 good. So, uh what happened to Sam Altman? Uh is he back? Yeah, he's back. I'll also be back in a few months. <laughs> <laughs> and then the world will be at peace <laughs> that's good that's good that's good uh what do you think will uh ai take over the world well i don't know how to answer that like the way if someone says you know will ai take over the world mm. by through pop culture you kind of think of like you know something like endira and chitti mm. you know, attacking you and you know killing killing people and throwing cars around that's what i sort of envision even as someone who's probably worked a little bit in that space but the way i think ai will take over is it's going to make our lives easier and that way we will sort of get a lot of our time back due to increased productivity but it's not really going to take control over things that we don't want it to get con- take control over at this point at least like not right now and i i think that'll take a long time before we get there but for now it is going to take over a lot of the boring jobs that we don't like doing and then maybe in the future something goes to shit but i'm not sure about that but right now it's basically us letting it do the boring stuff so that we can probably concentrate on better things and you know move the civilization forward but for now i don't think it's going to take over it's just going to be a better life okay forward. yeah so probably ai is going to make people more lazy um yeah it could i mean there's two things right like Let's say <clears throat> I don't know I'm just taking a random example when they made the knife hmm. uh, you could cut things more easily so people could make better things with the knife more okay. artistic things that depends how you use it some people use it to stab people that's another <laughs> sort of way of looking at it but hmm. it, it it could make people more lazy but I think it's just going to make people's lives easier how they decide to uh, use that opportunity is up to them I can't really comment on that but yeah there could be people who turn out to be a little more lazy yeah uh, Okay. Can you explain artificial in- intelligence to someone who is very new to mm. the concept like me? Okay. Uh so yeah. So I want you to do it two ways. Mm. First one is the one mark answer and second one is a 10 mark answer. One and 10 marks. Okay. Uh, Usually it's not the right but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> one and 10. Okay, I'll give you the one mark answer. Okay. So th- basically 3 to 4 marks 6 marks I leave it so I can I- copy paste the one mark answer 10 times it's the same <laughs> length and then I get 10 marks so the one mark answer is um artificial intelligence is a sort of a uh, way where computers mug it's a sort of computerized mugging it kind of sees some data tries to build a pattern out of it and when you show it new data it kind of tries to guess stuff that's like the one mark answer one mark answer but uh, you know more on the indian context it's mugging mm-hmm. it's a it's a slightly intelligent mugging uh now if you want to talk about the 10 mark answer you know um i'm going to repeat the question what is artificial intelligence because that's going to give me like two marks <laughs> and then the rest eight marks i'm going to say like artificial intelligence is anywhere where a computer can do a task which traditionally requires human intelligence uh what does this mean um uh, to sort of break it down there's a lot of different variety of tasks that humans can do uh right now today artificial intelligence can do tasks which humans can do in a couple of seconds like identifying how many cars are there in the picture or identifying what's a cat what's a dog these are kind of things that artificial intelligence can do right now maybe in the future we're going to uh, towards more uh, what we call general ai uh, which is more human like but for today artificial intelligence is a very simple uh, substitution of what a human can do in a second with what the computer is doing so um to break it down again into two parts where we have two things one's called artificial narrow intelligence and then there's artificial general intelligence what we have today all the state of the art things that you see today all falls under artificial narrow intelligence uh, okay to redefine it it's basically things that can be done specific tasks which the computer is very specialized in examples you know um your uh, your image detection you know um like we use it in self driving cars so you look at you look at a scene and you kind of figure out what's a pedestrian what's a car human can do it in a second um something like um even like voice uh, alexa so it understanding what we're trying to say and doing something of it is again pretty simple for humans so these kind of very mundane yet uh human like tasks 
is what we can do today with artificial narrow intelligence. Now if we get into the unexplored area of artificial general intelligence, which is again to sort of bring up pop culture's chitti. Mm-hmm. And you know, he could do a lot of things. He could like destroy his owner. Though I, I, I honestly haven't seen all the movies, but I know he's like pretty smart. So it's a lot. Okay, of, this is AGI. AGI. AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence. Um, it's like us as humans, right? We are not specifically trained in a lot of things. We kind of figure things out as they go. Like you go to school, you go, you do all these stuff. But you know, we do have a certain amount of variety in the things we can learn, and we don't really need a lot of data to learn them, right? Unless you're a muck pot or whatever. But we can sort of figure things out naturally, and you know, you know, use a certain set of skills across a varied range of tasks, and we can figure out, we can reason, we have emotions, and all these kind of human-like features, which we currently cannot really mathematically uh, model, at least to the best of our my understanding. Like it's very hard to sort of model these kind of things, and because it's very hard to model it, uh, very hard to sort of um, yeah think about how this would work very mathematically. We haven't we haven't reached that point of like actually having an AGI system, okay. but it could be a reality. I don't know how long it's going to take. Cause I don't know. I read somewhere that uh, Sam Altman was uh, taken out of OpenAI just because he cracked the AGI. Yeah, I don't was tell. is it true? Like, does it have any <laughs> like? Sort? Uh, yeah. I mean, I did hear about that Q star. Huh. I think that's what it was called. Q star being the AGI. I I would be very very surprised if that's true. Um, cause. Honestly, ChatGPT is very impressive. You know, the, the okay. latest product, ChatGPT is very impressive. But, uh, you know, to go from there to AGI, I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't believe it. Uh, it how, might... how far are we uh, from AGI happening? Like, uh, in terms of uh, a number of years? Well, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, the thing is, I can't sort of connect the dots. Like, where, mm-hmm. where we are right mm-hmm. now, see... I, I don't sort of research deeply into AI. I mean, whatever I've worked is on the narrow AI set. Mm. On AGI, you know, it's very hard for me to connect the dots saying that, you know, it's going to be ready in 10 years, 50 years. Okay. But just to throw a number out there, you know, the speed of with the way things are going really okay. fast. You mean uh, the, the AGI happening is not a single event, but uh, it will happen like... Yeah, yeah. So I think it's going to sort of go over the, a spectrum of human intelligence, mm-hmm. you know, maybe... Mm-hmm. Something, uh, maybe not a small baby, but, you know, a small, a, a little kid. Uh, I won't say kids aren't in, in intelligent, but, you know, some sort of form of human intelligence, which isn't like regular human intelligence. Maybe we might reach that first in some sort of way. But it's, again, depends on how they sell it. So it's a lot of different factors. Okay. But what I'm thinking is, I don't know, maybe 50 years. I It's really, <laughs> it's really a short, which I have no sort of expertise in. It just, mm. it just feels like, it's uh, fiction at this point. Okay. Uh, but uh, I don't know what the folks at Open, OpenAI are doing. So I I can I doubt that they're up anywhere close to this. But if they are, then uh, yeah, good luck to us. <laughs> so what are some common uh, misconceptions about AI? Yeah, this is a fun one. Uh, so, I mean, so I've been uh working uh, you know i was exposed to this sort of a little more than you know actually ai and using these tools somewhere around 2017 uh 2017 to 2019 while i was in school um i really didn't see a lot of misuse of the word ai you know we, we didn't use it that loosely uh but then when i moved to silicon valley the bay area i realized that this ai is this term that's used by big companies to just sell their product as something that is magical that can solve all their customers problems so Every company had like a dot AI at the end of it. <laughs> so I was just, you know, joking with my friends that we should start a company called Budnick dot AI. And you mean Budnick, Budnick AI? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was basically, you know, like it's a, it's a, it's a huge marketing term. 2019 and today it's just gone even, you know, much bigger than it was. So the, the, the sort of, you know, there's this um, hype curve, which I've uh, read about. So, you know, you have your your crazy hype and then people are just going to lose trust and, you know, it's going to go into the trap mm. of dis, 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 disillusionment or whatever that word is. But I think we're somewhere on the top right now. Uh, so one major thing is people think AI is magic. Mm-hmm. You know, you just throw AI at a problem and then the problem solved and then you can sit back and relax. They think it's, uh, you know, very easy to deploy AI. So... You know, uh, some conversation might be like, hey, you know, how are we going to solve this problem? And then there's someone going to come and say, let's use AI on it. And you're like, uh, 
yeah sure let's use ai on it and then when it goes to the engineers they're like hey what the hell like, what you can't just use ai on thing <laughs> so it's not easy to deploy it there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes that people obviously you don't see behind the scenes cuz behind the scenes mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. people don't really know about it and they take a lot for granted uh the other thing is actual intelligence the ai is not intelligent it can seem to be intelligent that's how you sort of sell it like chat gpt seems like an intelligent thing right like but behind the scenes is just a bunch of you know um, taking some text matching it to something else and figuring out an answer so behind the scenes it's very ugly not very you know presentable but uh, when you don't understand something you tend to believe it's magical so that's a huge misconception as to like um wait what was the original point <laughs> like um uh, the thing was uh, uh it's not behind the scenes back end is not very yeah back end is is not very it's not shown and people obviously would not try to sort of dig in not everyone's mm-hmm. going to and dig into it and figure what goes on so it all seems magical so that's you know one more big misconception and yeah, one other sort of i mean similar on the lines of people overusing the term it's like a lot of like media and you know youtube wherever they they sort of have uh, monetized this idea of like let's use ai let's sell some courses on ai you know uh, i see a lot of stuff like you know learn ai in 5 minutes no way i i i honestly when you ask me to define ai it's such a huge term this is my definition to what you go ask someone else they got to tell you another definition no one has a definition for ai because ai has been there for a long time now people are talking about it now they say ai is chatgpt ai is something okay okay But the way i understand it earlier uh, machine learning used to happen uh, now the same machine learning concepts they are uh, putting the word uh, the term ai to just market it is what yeah is it right yeah um so yeah that's uh, that's how, how do you differentiate between machine learning yeah. and ai so i think if i have a chance to edit my 10 mark answer maybe because ah, uh-huh, of uh-huh. those marks so you think of a you know you remember the venn diagrams right uh this is not really a venn venn diagram i guess it is so imagine a bunch of circles with each other so in the broad spectrum of things we have ai it's so broad even no one can really define it mm. everyone you know if the door opens by itself they're going to call it ai mm. you know all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. so ai and then within it uh you have machine learning and then you have data science so okay. so what's the difference right so data science is a sort of uh you know specialization where people humans look at data and they they sort of analyze i mean they use tools and whatever but it's up to the sort of human at the end to sort of analyze trends and produce reports on you know how things are going and mm-hmm. it's it it has a human element to it on the other hand you have machine learning where the machine is taught to uh figure out patterns and use it on anything that it sees in the future so data science and machine learning under machine learning you have deep learning which is another very popular term so deep learning is a kind of machine learning is basically the difference is deep learning uses like a different kind of uh, internal architecture that's the only difference that comes under machine learning so so it's ai machine learning deep learning and on the side you know some intersection is going to be data science like uh, while working uh, with ai like did you encounter some funny experiences on how uh, the human intelligence and yeah. uh, the ar- artificial intelligence interact with each other Yeah uh, so it, it, it's funny in terms of like yeah we 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 kind of think again ai can do many things but it's funny when it fails you know in certain ways <laughs> so uh, for instance you know with uh, self driving right mm. um i want it's not a specific example this general um, problem which we have with using something like ai uh let's say you know this right now maybe from 16 2016 the computers have become really really good at seeing things like the first good big breakthrough in the field of ai was in computer vision where you know it got really good at identifying things and you know it blew things out of the water like whatever used to be the scenario before now it became a lot better so in those cases you know we, we would think that you know we can extend this to whatever we want identify whatever we want so for instance uh, one thing that you know ai can't pick up as of now is uh, cues you know like humans like judging them or something like that so let's say we're driving in india right and i deploy my computer vision system is going to say like you know car auto whatever and I, but this is in the car and the car has to sort of decide uh what turn to take depending on what it sees now let's say you have a driver going next to you and he's like pissed off at you like he's like you know giving you the look the computer is going to see that and just going to say human it's not going to say human pissed off it doesn't know right so it is going to take the turn oh yeah humans there i'm going to take the turn like you know 
it doesn't understand that we have not trained it and these are many things right like even something like uh, just making you know just looking at the road on the right you as a human would kind of think that yeah, he's coming he's coming this way as a computer it'd be like human and it, it still goes so these are things you obviously work on as you yeah. have you like uh, um like driven a self driven car like i mean <laughs> yeah uh, sat in one sat in one yeah yeah yes i have yeah like yeah. Uh, how was the experience it's uh, so the thing with self driving cars is uh, when you think about it you know when you think that hey you know this car is being driven by a computer like wow 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 but the experience itself should be really boring like if you think of yourself in a car a safe drive is something that you know has many very few sort of issues or you know you don't almost run into someone and you know it's it's not a amusement park right so it's a very boring drive you're just sitting and you might even go to sleep i've not been on rides that are that long mm-hmm. but it's it's a boring experience like it's just you just look at the steering turn left right few times you're like okay fine that's about it it's it's a very boring experience you are sort of uh, removing the beauty of driving with self driving okay. but you're also making it safe so it's it's not great it's not it's not amazing i don't know the notion of giving the entire control to a machine and yeah i don't know how it works Yeah yeah it's 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 scary right it's scary. like uh, yeah and especially like you know like oh yeah i had something to do with it like oh like, <laughs> <laughs> oh this probably the next generation will get used to it but yeah. people who have earlier driven the car yeah, yeah. it's tough for them so we were talking about generative ai uh, did you see rashmika mandana's video yeah uh, i i i saw it and it was you know all those things that you after seeing enough deep fakes like deep fakes have been around for about 6 7 years now you uh, you kind of try to you kind of understand that you know this thing's a fake like uh the the sort of uh, it just didn't look natural mm-hmm. and then the other thing of like you know some areas were blurry uh details weren't well defined so you know world where you know that people are trying to frame actresses you know with deep fakes given that information and then you see that video For me, it was like, "Ha, huh, it is a deep fake." But probably, I know, you know, for a lot of people who haven't seen deep fakes before, I've only seen like badly edited photos, which are very obviously wrong. For them, yeah, it might have come as a shocker, as like, "Oh, wow, what am I seeing?" And then, it, so the 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 sort of uh, many people can fall for it, and they have fallen for it, as we saw. Uh, but yeah, there there are things that you, after seeing in, in, enough of them, you kind of see that okay, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. definitely a deep fake. Especially uh, uh, taking Modi ji's voice and uh, making him sing all the love songs, all the Bollywood songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people even sang, made him sing Kannada songs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good singer. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know if the playlist on Spotify, but I'll subscribe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like it's uh, in the world of generative AI. uh it's again it's a creative world right so people can do whatever they want now the intentions is what matters so in the world of deep fakes usually it's very ill intention uh it can cause all kind of all sorts of issue to people who haven't like really who are really know about this so um yeah it, it's a whole sort of uh, it's up to anyone who's using it or you know generating something to see make something that's funny or make something that's very uh has very nefarious uh intentions like for instance like uh the past election i mm. thought you know we can like sort of uh, someone want to do they could deep fake a whole you know um, uh speech by some political member and then that can like, screw up the whole election someone could have done it uh, if they wanted to and i feel in the near future it's going to come up uh, quite a bit so we as you know uh, ge- the general folks need to know uh about deep fakes about mm-hmm. the ability of uh, folks to just generate anything they want without really uh you know uh, without something actually happening you can just make things out of thin air quite literally and when used in situations like elections they can like sort of change things yeah very rapidly one day and the whole uh, government can fall down yeah exactly so i i think as ge- the general public needs to be educated on the existence of such a technology and in general i feel people should not jump the gun Mm-hmm. on issues mm-hmm. so that's another separate topic but basically mm-hmm. education about this technology is very important and probably you know from a from a tech side if deep fake is something that's generating it you we should we can also build something that identifies if this was generated by deep fakes or not it's going to get very hard in the near future like maybe in the next 3 to 4 years 
to even for the trained eye to figure out what's deep fake and what's not and that's very dangerous but there's there they might be computerized way to sort of detect such things yeah okay i i heard like ashwini i wish now the minister yeah. he's pretty serious about this and he yeah. has formed a separate cell to um, like Uh, hear the grievances of somebody affected by these deep fake videos mm-hmm. and all such things. I don't know if it is his ministry, but uh, there is a sort of a right. uh, avenue to do that. Yeah, and I think that is actually a really good move because this deep fake issue is going to get really good really soon. I think it's I mean it's good enough right now because a lot of people are fooled by it. So it's going to get really good really soon, and uh, people need to be proactive about this. Uh, and I I don't exactly know what they're doing. but the fact that they are thinking about it is obviously a big plus and they maybe implement something in the near future but it's dangerous um, especially in in the country in india where people are very passionate about mm-hmm. their views um uh, and you you give them something like this and then things can change so that's something that really needs to be uh, sort of uh, uh, fought against very soon what ethical consideration uh like you think that's very crucial in deployment of the ai technology yeah so um when when we build an ai model and we want to do something we basically want uh the data right we the the fundamental uh, the first the first step in building an ai model mm-hmm. is getting the relevant data getting data is very hard preparing that data now you know it's ai model is not a box where you just to you know i'm i'm saying it figuratively but you don't throw stuff at it and it doesn't do stuff mm-hmm. things need to be connected things need to be channelized i mean we're talking about software here so things need to be in a certain format and by format i don't mean like you know mp4 mp3 like you know a format of organization that you know things need to be a certain way mm-hmm. and that is a very hard task uh, there are companies out there that get tens of millions of dollars to give data to sort of uh, take data label it you know data uh, engineering and fig- getting data is a really hard task now given this we also need to sort of um, uh, add this layer of protection of like what kind of data are we getting getting because the ai model is only as good as its data if the data has bias mm-hmm. your model is going to have bias you can obviously do stuff to reduce that bias but again the bias is there bias again is very subjective but in, let's just say bias is an absolute term and you know we really need to control uh what kind of data is fed into the models which is very hard and it's very challenging and i don't think it's even possible because everyone sees different uh issues differently and everyone has their own biases mm-hmm. very high level biases that's maybe something you can do like ensuring that it doesn't pick you know certain kind of person as something and you know okay. those, those kind of things you can control but once it gets a little more nuanced than that it's mm. not easy to sort of um ensure that that is being protected are you saying that uh uh the there is no transparency in the uh decision making process of the ai technology yeah so when it comes to uh, ethical considerations the mm. part of that mm. you have your ai model mm. which is actually how transparent is the decision making thing uh it depends so there are some models where you can sort of figure out mm. um, like for instance when your uh image recognition you can sort of figure out that initially it tries like if i have to uh, recognize a, do- a dog it's going to figure out uh, ears mouth face put them all together and say dog those kind of things we can we sort of decently understand but there's other things which you know really it's kind of black boxy you just give it data you look at the output you sort of uh, keep giving it data keep training it till it gives you the right output and we don't really know what actually goes down underneath in a lot of s- scenarios so when such things happen when you when you have something that's not explainable hence not very controllable okay. and hence not very transparent that obviously is some is quite dangerous when used in a wrong context like biases can propagate so at the end of the day it's all on data uh, mm-hmm. most of it is on data give it uh, you know uh, i don't know the exact thing there's a saying uh i know man it's something like um uh, eat garbage shit garbage or something i don't know garbage 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 and garbage, garbage, garbage out. yeah exactly okay so that's exactly what it is you give it garbage it's going to get garbage it's all data and that's that that is what again it's again hidden behind the beauty and the facade of ai and the magic it's okay, data- probably uh, the amount of data that is there in english is more in yeah. more than any other language yeah yeah okay yeah so basically 
the english buyers will step in if if 100%. not uh, repaired yeah i mean whoever's churning out the mm-hmm. data mm-hmm. it's their opinion that's going to come out and that's 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 uh, that, that that's that is artificial narrow intelligence it's, mm-hmm. it it needs data it can't learn off less data like humans can make decisions we can reason and stuff mm-hmm. but with machine learning models it's whatever data you give it and that's the model itself is going to say like, hey i don't want this i mean as a as an engineer whatever you give it is what it's going to learn what you get what you give it is predominantly going to be western influence when it comes to more like mm-hmm. nuanced topics it is going to be western influence because they have more data so yeah those are obvious biases that will definitely stand out okay then um, coming back to self driving cars mm. uh what are the key technologies that 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 are used in a self driving car yeah so uh, if you think about i mean a human driven car right we are working on replacing just the human uh, mm-hmm. in most cases most companies what they're doing is like ha uh, here's a whatever corolla uh, today there's no driver on the corolla everything's pretty much the same so you have to replace the human one primary thing is vision right So one technology that's used in self driving cars computer vision so just you know the human eyes and this is far better than what a human can see at this state so uh, okay. we have lasers we have cameras we have radars we have a bunch of sensors even like you know things to um, see in the dark like infrared so vision is amazing like it can see really far it can see really small objects so it the car very well knows what's around it to uh, today's tech Okay. So computer vision is really good. The other uh, effect is when you get that input, right? When you get that visionary input, as a human you you do certain actions. Hmm. You control the car. So that that connection from vision to turning the steering wheel, pressing the gas pedal, pressing the brake. Mm-hmm. That is what we call controls. Planning and controls. So hmm. essentially that is that is also one as one technology that's, you know, part of it. Mm. The other, you know, sort of not um i won't say as advanced but not as good when compared to humans is prediction okay prediction is the idea of a car seeing a certain environment and predicting what the uh, agents or what the people in that environment the people or cars or whatever will do next uh humans are very unpredictable right we we can obviously make certain assumptions like if the person is walking straight just mm-hmm. because the car came he won't start to jump and jump on the car mm-hmm. can't happen it does it happens in san francisco but like those are rare cases so again it's uh, you as a human make certain judgments looking at the person and then you see like okay you know uh, do they look like you know they got to do something funky right now do the, these kind of decisions are made on the fly and humans are very good at this even things like when you're driving a road and someone's looking on the right and then you see them looking on the right and then you say oh this guy's going to change lanes as a car as a computer that to really won't figure that out so prediction is something that is still uh uh something that is is probably the last uh, bit we need to figure out before okay. we, we we totally trust this technology to take over our lives okay the like on what level are we in like mm. self driving cars like do do they have levels or yeah. sophistications yeah so the sae society of automotive engineers they mm. they basically define five levels of self driving okay uh so level 1 is as simple as cruise control fixing your speed just going straight You know, okay. Speed fix. simple. We have that. Okay. Level two so, cruise control can happen in both uh, automatic as well as uh, the geared vehicle, like the manual geared vehicle. Uh, that I don't, I don't. Yeah, it, I mean, cruise control can happen in both vehicles, okay. right? Because when you fix the speed, you are at a certain gear, mm-hmm. and then if you change the gear mid this thing, I don't know how the vehicle reacts. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a good question, but I'm not sure. I think it'll just keep doing and then you'll just okay. scroll up your vehicle but okay uh that's definitely a possibility and then uh, that's level 1 level 2 is uh, something like lane keep assist so fix speed but you're also keeping lane so you're turning and you're at the mm-hmm. same speed so it's a decent level of self driving uh, mm-hmm. uh i wouldn't call it self drive self driving i achieved it like drive yeah drive assistance okay. like even in india i believe the zylo has it mm-hmm. it has lane keep assist uh, i don't know why because no one keeps lanes anyway so <laughs> you know it is this you know keep the driver inside assist it up mm. but anyway uh, mm. uh it has lane keep assist mm. lane keep assist there uh, now the state of the art you know what runs in california right now is is a is a level 4 level 4 level 4 level 4 basically means there are level five levels five levels so level 1 and 2 i just mentioned level 1 is just a single component doing something autonomously 
just okay. going as two is two components. Now three and four, I don't really exact remember the exact definition, but let's just imagine a continuous spectrum up to five, uh, where five is basically you don't have a steering wheel uh, or you don't have any control over the, what the car does. Probably you have an on-off switch, but you don't really have uh, the human sitting inside the car does not have control of the car. So to leave to reach that level of autonomy. You need to have that level of trust saying that the car will do the right thing all the time, or at least a certain percentage of the time. Okay. Human never needs to sort of uh, uh, interrupt or like take over control. The level just before that, that's level four is pretty much the same, except you're given the human, the steering wheel and the brakes and the accelerator. Mm -hmm. So in this scenario, if something goes wrong, so you're not guaranteeing 100% autonomy, something goes wrong, the human can take over and just um, save the day. Uh, okay. So this is like the all the levels of autonomy. Right now we have good level four systems, but again level four in a specific location, you know, which has been like mm -hmm. tested many times. Mm -hmm. If you just mm -hmm. take it, take a car, drop it somewhere, it's not gonna work. So it's a very loaded definition. Level four in this place, in this kind of area. So again, it's 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 a R and D. So it takes time to sort of mature and go to all different places. Like for example, in India. Mm -hmm. uh, all the stuff that we build in the US will not work here, right? I mean, even I don't know how to drive in India. Or <laughs> how would I teach a computer to drive, right? Like, honestly, when I drive in India, it's like, the only, I, if I was a program, I'd just have like, if hit, don't. <laughs> <laughs> then get from A to B. That, that's the only. If hit, don't hit. Yeah, if hit, don't hit. That's all. The right I'll put on this thing and then send the car. God knows what's going to happen. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are so unpredictable here even every day i'm just surprised i mean where in okay like uh, can a car can a car predict uh who is a pedestrian and who is a occupant in another car yeah the, i mean again like Such human things like, like yeah human okay. vision as in classifying stuff right like mm. this is a person this is a person inside a vehicle mm -hmm. yeah easy as long as we can see it as long as we have some sort of input showing, showing mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. data we can do it is stuff like uh, babies and strollers that's also something right so you're putting okay, a stroller okay, okay, okay. It can... we know that there's a baby inside oh, so these are things that are common enough for us to model the system around it but again there are other edge cases out there like you know uh, one example is uh, uh, you know what if, if there was a car driving on the road and hitchhiking right now uh, ah. will, will a self driving car hitchhike uh, as an engineer, I just say like, no, I don't want to even deal with that sort of realm of possibilities of allowing someone else into the car mm. and stopping the car. Mm. But like, imagine like, we just say like, okay, let's see what we can do here. And then the hitchhiker holding a board saying, I will not kill you next to a sign that says, do not pick up hitchhikers. So the system is just like, I don't know how it's going to react. Like we have to program all of this. <laughs> I as an engineer want to simplify the problem because it's already bloody complicated to start off with. So these kind of things, obviously it can't, do very well or maybe it can and we just need to sit and do it but general stuff like identifying things it's really good at okay say uh, in an emergency situation okay uh, uh, the self-driving car okay it has a pedestrian and it has an occupant whose life should be given more priority yeah so that is a very age-old um, problem in general it's called a trolley problem mm -hmm. essentially you have a train that's going and right in front of you in the track is five people, okay? Let's say they're tied to the track. Mm -hmm. And there's another track on the side, mm. which you can choose to go to if you want, which has only one person. Mm -hmm. As a person who's doing, I mean, whatever, driving, training the train, <laughs> what do you call it, driving the train, mm. uh, as a train driver, uh, will you not do anything and let five people die? Or will you do something and let one person die? Mm. Um, very objectively speaking, five versus one, obviously one's the right choice, so kill one. <laughs> But then as a human, you're like, oh, for that one person today, I need to do something. My, I have to do some action which will basically take a life. Instead, if I just sit back and do nothing, then the train takes the blame of just going on a track and killing five people. That dilemma is something that I don't know how to answer. So this has obviously been asked a lot in the self-driving community. Everyone has different opinions. Um, you know, some might think it's controversial, some might not. So these are mm -hmm. these philosophical questions are asked a lot. And I feel as engineers, if we start digging into it, which is which is a good thing, we need to ask ourselves these philosophical questions. But we also need to see, uh, you know, when will this actually happen? Like, you know, is this, is this a realistic chance of this happening? So, because everything needs to be based on a certain amount of probability. Uh, even when we have full self driving, it is not going to be a perfect system. 
बट वी नीड टू क्वान्टिफाई स्टफ एंड वॉट वी डिसाइड टू पुट एनर्जी ऑन नीड्स टू बी सॉर्ट ऑफ वैलिडेटेड बाई दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ अकरेंस है कॉमनली एनफ so it's right now it's all sort of uh, people arguing on reddit <laughs> um what challenges do you think need to be overcome before uh, we start having widespread use of the self driving technology cars yeah so uh, one is obviously getting people to accept it uh, and i feel uh, in in any sort of environment you have three kinds of people people who will accept it people who want it people who don't care which is like probably 90% of the people and the rest whatever 5 to 10% is people who absolutely hate it why they hate it you know maybe they think it's unsafe maybe they love driving i i'm not going to get into why they hate it uh so for 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 this, for this to be accepted a good sizable population needs to uh, sort of want to have it so that could include the people who don't care and the people who love it so mm. once uh, maybe that's from a regulatory point of view other the other thing obviously needs to be really safe so right now um it's not very well formed as to like what you consider safe i mean it is still uh, um mm. you know an area which is you know we are innovating on we are learning new things every day uh two is having ensuring that we know how safe we are uh number 3 you know uh, the other thing is once we have it it's going to be much safer we are going to have uh sort of uh, way much fewer accidents much better flow of traffic and the idea of owning a car might just go away because honestly right now when you have a car it's parked for 18 hours whatever okay. you know depending on your driving it's mostly parked right so is it really useful when it's parked no obviously not so uh, in uh, in a idealistic world can you let someone else obviously we are not going to let someone else use a car but let's say we eliminate the idea of car ownership mm-hmm. right and we just have self driving robot taxis people can get and use it and then someone else uses it oh uh. and the, the communists will like it yeah exactly getting ownership yeah it's it's all sort of equal ownership um i maybe you can sign up for the premium subscription of the fastest self driving car you know the, the capitalists obviously walk into the, the <laughs> conversation what's the money in it so yeah your premium subscription where you know it has the super fast self driving car or you know this self driving car which is premium subscription now has the right of way everywhere you know you can just all the signals are green you're going to get like a convoy mm-hmm. i mean we yeah, it's it's the size of limit as long as you have the money but yeah just thinking about it you know a lot of things are going to change people okay. some people love driving i personally depending on the roads in bangalore traffic no one loves driving so i think people will be very happy here you know nice scenic drives you can probably still do it but day day to day of stuff of driving is going to, if you can remove it it's much better because we're all going to see what save a lot of time we're all going to be less stressed because okay. honestly the uh, work from home is great not because you you have to go to office and meet your uh coworkers work from home is great because you don't have to go to office so it, so obviously you know those things are going to straight and out so it's i i feel it's going to be better but i mean it's not going to be perfect solution right on the other hand has the has the uh y- you were saying something yeah so it's not going to be the perfect solution because on the other hand you have uh, again stuff like you know if 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 an accident does happen who are you going to blame like you want to you know you, you want to beat someone up and you look into the car and like a bit Because <laughs> cool. yeah. that that I remind uh, reminds me of Taza and the Honda car. Huh. I, I even joked like my back when I was working in another company. Uh, someone asked me, "Oh, you have self-driving cars in India?" I was just like scoring around like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we have. It's called Taza, and you know, it drives itself." Because <laughs> honestly, that was the first self-driving car that I saw, uh-huh. uh, and that was I could even argue artificial general intelligence because it knew how how to kill, how to kill, <laughs> whatever, right? Mm. Okay. So has the uh, American society accepted? uh self driving car fully or like they still have apprehensions about it uh so i mean my opinion comes from a bias right like i am always uh, surrounded by either techies or younger people mm-hmm. who obviously have a much better um, you know feeling towards anything new they mm-hmm. like it so i would say yes uh, people have accepted it mm-hmm. but on the other hand i've also seen like um for instance like uh in san francisco self driving cars are being attacked San Francisco there was also Phoenix Arizona where you know another company uh, had this service cars are being attacked so i think uh, there's obviously there's never you can't keep everyone happy all the time which is definitely the case here mm-hmm. uh, but i i feel that if it's safe enough by a metric i don't know how to define mm. i think the americans will accept it um i i mean i don't know about other countries but america should be pretty accepting in the near future if it's like proven to be safe enough 
ओके ओके एंड कमिंग टू गवर्नमेंट रेगुलेशंस लाइक देर बी अ लॉट ऑफ जॉब लॉस ड्यू टू आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड स्टफ हाउ डू यू थिंक इंडिया शुड प्रिपेयर फॉर इट लाइक एस्पेशली फॉर अ कंट्री लाइक इंडिया वेर द पॉपुलेशन इज सो ह्यूज ओके हाउ शुड इंडिया प्रिपेयर या आई मीन सो द थिंग अबाउट India is like there's a lot of services that have a lot of built-in redundancy in it. Yeah. Uh, where already three people are doing a job that one can very easily. Uh, I don't understand. Maybe it's just to drive employment, so that more many people have jobs. Mm-hmm. But uh, I feel up to a point that that doesn't make sense anymore. Like for instance, uh, traffic lights, right? Traffic lights have been. I I don't. I think they've been around since when I was born. So mm-hmm. I don't know when traffic lights were invented, but it's been around for a long time. even now i see a lot of junctions in bangalore where there's uh, either no traffic light where there definitely needs to be one mm-hmm. or it's replaced by a human or trying to direct traffic mm-hmm. who's obviously no one cares what they're saying traffic is like whenever there's no traffic light and the traffic police trying to do stuff one they're not visible by everyone and people aren't going to respect their opinion so it's it's just chaotic so it doesn't make sense to me like why don't you just put a traffic light there my explanation is oh they want to hire more people they want to give people jobs okay so if these kind of uh like simple replacements have not been done mm-hmm. in a government sense i don't see how ai is going to come and change anything because redundancy and inertia is is sort of uh, the scenario right now and i don't think that's going to change from a government perspective when we come from private to to private sector where people obviously want to optimize as much as possible mm-hmm. and they want to make things for as cheap as possible there you know if they have jobs where you know which are simple which the ai can do which i which i can argue like a lot of things do right now they'll very easily replace it if they have a good enough system mm-hmm. uh so the only way for these folks to sort of uh not get replaced is to sort of keep up with the trend so upskilling themselves is very important you have to be like a lifelong learner you always have to sort of learn about this new relevant technology and stay relevant okay. because if you always uh think that oh i know this Uh, I I think this will be useful for the rest of my life, and they just sit back and chill. You're gonna be replaced. Uh, I mean, not in all, all scenarios, but if if it's something like in the tech world, service te- service uh, industries that we have in the tech world, like testing or whatever data entry. I, I mean, I can't think of many, but these kind of things will very easily be replaced even today, right? If someone decides to build something around, you know, something like ChatGPT or something generating. uh basic stuff mm-hmm. gets replaced and then these people lose their jobs that's just definitely going to happen in the private okay. sector oh okay. uh what do you really need to use ai as you have to upskill it upskill yourself to know uh, what's going on two you have to use ai as a tool right now because right now honestly it can't replace things which are little more nuanced things which require a little higher level of skill okay that's something it cannot replace but and but again just because you think that what you're doing right now cannot be replaced mm-hmm. you always want to be more productive mm-hmm. in many cases especially in software you can be more productive by using these ai tools mm-hmm. like for instance when i have to i think of an idea and i have to write the code for it you know writing the code is a boring job like i don't need a software engineer to write the code okay. if there was some system that wrote the code for me i just need the idea right mm-hmm. that's my job my idea, my job is to come up with ideas not essentially write code writing code is just a sort of medium to sort of interact with the okay. application so if did i can always change you just need to have the skills to figure out what to do and then the ai tools can be used to make your life easier than make you more way more productive gives you more time to sort of do more important challenging stuff so saves you a lot of time so basically if your job is not very high skill think about it mm-hmm. probably you know so like who will be at more loss the tester or the developer like where yeah. do you stand on this i i'm a developer i stand with the developers <laughs> <laughs> uh to the uh i i mean uh, it's, uh, that is the scenario right so again as i said like the job as a developer is not just to write code is to come up with ideas and then mm. the way you implement those ideas is by writing code so obviously there's a sort of skill required with knowing how to write code which i i can argue is like probably going to like um reduce in relevance right uh from a testers perspective i can't speak for all i uh, haven't really interacted with a lot of testers but i if i can imagine like uh you know they they basically writing tests which are very similar and their day to day job is not very uh different right may may not even be the case for developer but comparatively i think they might have a more um you know con- um you know similar day to day experience compared to a developer and if that can be automated which i think can 
their job is definitely at risk uh, before it comes to developers. Developers, yeah, I feel bad developers will go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I need to make sure that uh, I'm not a bad developer. I, I'll try and do something there. But testers, yeah, I think they're probably first on the chopping block. <laughs> okay, are there any um, AI applications that excite you uh, that will make my life easier? Uh, yeah, I mean, let's just the elephant in the room, ChatGPT. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, that like, definitely right. Like honestly, I I saw computer vision. Mm. I didn't see it at its inception way back in 2014, mm. but I've seen it grow over the past six years since I started taking like interest in it, and it was very good, impressive. For me, ChatGPT was just like the you know uh, I like the I mean people have used this everywhere the iPhone moment for AI. Okay. Like when Steve Jobs came and showed this phone that didn't have buttons and was like so much better looking. So I feel ChatGPT is that. And I I was honestly blown away because uh, for me, I uh, how I use ChatGPT, right? So I'm a very bad Google searcher. Let's say I have a bug in my code. Mm-hmm. I want to figure it out. So there's a website called Stack Overflow. You go and type your bug. Mm-hmm. And people who are good at this know, get their answers very quickly. I am not very good. I am, uh, I don't know why I'm not very good, but I'm not very good. So I, I take a while to sort of figure out like, oh, okay, this is a thing. This, this might be, that might be. People are very quick, but I'm very bad. Mm-hmm. So for me, ChatGPT is a super quick Google search. I just put my bug into it. I just say like, oh, this is a thing. It just says, you know, this is a solution. Most of the times it works. So ChatGPT has just like blown me away in, in that sense of like, it just makes my life a lot easier by giving me quicker answers. The other thing is how well it can understand what you're trying to say. Uh, for example, with, with Google search, I just type, uh, for elephant, I'll just type E-L-P-A-N-T and then mm-hmm. somehow it figures out, do you kind of figure out you mean elephant? Mm-hmm. Now take that to another level with ChatGPT. I'll just say, you know, like, uh, hey, uh, you know, mention some random mm-hmm. keywords. I don't know how, but it always figures it out. Uh, now I'm not really dug into uh, the complete implementation mm-hmm. detail of ChatGPT. Mm-hmm. It must be... Uh, something uh, really cool, but like it, it mm-hmm. for me, it's it's completely amazing. So ChatGPT is one such tool. Another, I mean, I can just go back to self-driving. We have a bunch mm-hmm. of uh, computer vision tools that we use. Uh, those are obviously very impressive. Uh, the the other one, which is again very impressive to me, uh, recommendation systems. Mm. Uh, say for instance, instance, social media like Instagram, uh, music recommendation like Spotify, okay. uh, like in Instagram, like. Um, I mean, I'm a victim of it. I don't mind it. It has my information. It knows what I like. And it kind of recommends stuff based on that. Mm-hmm. Honestly, in the recent past, it's been recommending a, quite a bit of trash. I don't know why that's the case. But that's, again, that's not a fault of uh, me. Mm. I'd like to think so. <laughs> but <laughs> it's maybe the model's off. But basically, yeah, it's really it's really good. Like, usually, you, you even for stuff like buying, right? Like Amazon, you're searching, and then your items you might like. So recommendation systems are very impressive. They're very useful, uh, but if you're like me, who like buys likes buying random shit all the time, it's a big uh, you know hit on your wallet. From the thing of Spotify, where basically they're recommending music you might like, it, it has helped me explore like different sort of types of music and uh, different kinds of artists. Um, and yeah, I mean, really helps you see what's out there and does a very good job of knowing what you like. So maybe these three things are you know what I really really like today. From a normal programmer to uh, an AI programmer, mm. like how can the shift happen? Like, is there a is there a like, are there tools that a person has to learn, or uh, h- how do how does this leap happen? How does this leap happen? So I mean, like I I feel an AI programmer is probably I mean if you're saying some someone who writes software to build machine learning tools, uh. I mean, generally for software engineering, I mean, I'm just generally, I think math is very important. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. need to know math because if you don't know math, then it's just like, you're, you're, I mean, I won't trivialize it, but it's pretty similar to just... Math play. at what level? Like, at which level? Um, it's with, with machine learning, mm-hmm. it is at a pretty advanced level. So, okay. I mean, calculus is very important, uh, linear algebra. So it's a pretty advanced level because you are building things that, you know, people haven't built before, right? So if it was if it was easy math, they would have already built it. <laughs> so it, it is a little more complicated. So I think it's very important for you to understand math to the level of 
I mean, I honestly think like engineering level math is actually pretty good. Uh, you know what we do in the first two years of engineering it's actually pretty good the problem is we don't never we never implement it it's always very theoretical mm -hmm. but machine learning you know all those people who sit down and say oh bro I learned trigonometry where am I using it this is where you're using it right okay. this, uh, all this uh, not trigonometry calculus you know well, people be like oh I oh d by dx why do I care I just want to know how to do my taxes okay cool I mean whatever but people use it they start just there for you know, just for like, you know, here's something complicated which I'll just ruin people's lives mm -hmm. with. It's useful. So, a good level of good understanding of math is definitely required for you to be effective. Programming, you know, it's it's a, it's a tool, right? It's again a tool for you to interface with the computer. So, it's important. Being a good software engineer is important. But knowing math is, is I would say, more important for someone to get into mm -hmm. AI. Or, I won't say AI again, mm -hmm. machine learning. Mm -hmm. Understanding how these things work behind the mm -hmm. scenes. So tomorrow you can go and build something or use something or try and understand how this thing works for whatever your use case is. Mm -hmm. So I would say math is first thing. Mm -hmm. Being a good software engineer, if you are already a good software engineer, I think that's a great skill to have. Not mm -hmm. many people, mm -hmm. even like top AI researchers aren't very great. Software engineer as in you're talking of only developers. Yeah. Programmers. Exactly. So if you if you know how to take an idea, whatever that idea might be and implement it, you know, in a nice, you know, clean way, mm -hmm. Being a software engineer, that's a really great skill to have. A lot of people don't have it. A lot of mm -hmm. top AI researchers write trash code. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, then good software engineers write good code, but they also need to know the math. So software engineering is sort of like this. Uh, you need both, right? You need to know the math and you need to know how to write, write in nicely. Mm -hmm. So, but if you're already a good software developer, you know, mm -hmm. get the math right, mm -hmm. try and understand what's going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes. Mm -hmm. And today, I mean, compared to what was, uh, even like five, six years ago when I started working on this, there are a lot of things, a lot of resources out there mm -hmm. for people to learn. Uh, be it existing models which you can test and try and, you know, mm -hmm. try mm -hmm. go wild with. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, try, try learning by trying. That's mm -hmm. one way. There's also great resources, right? Like, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't read books. Uh, I, I tend to, move, you know, go more on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, from 2014, uh, I was 15, I'm not sure. There's a professor, uh, his name is Andrew Ng. Mm. Um, he, I would say he is the first guy who sort of uh, popularized the sort of study on this uh, uh, on, on AI on a mm -hmm. large scale mm -hmm. he had this YouTube course which is still relevant for someone who wants to start even today because honestly AI has gone very advanced but you can't just jump there you need to sort of build yourself up and his courses do a very good work of like teaching you the basics getting into the math and it, it also gives you that certain level of respect for you know people who do this because uh, once it starts getting more and more complicated, it's crazy. Because you know, I, I honestly don't know how to do it. So these guys are wizards. Because, uh, you know, how, how did they figure out that, you know, putting this kind of uh, layer and whatever, right, is going to give you this kind of output? It's, honestly, there is no science to it. Uh, it's, or there is, and I don't understand it. That, that's probably true. But this Andrew Ng's course is a great resource, you know, just start off. And that gives you, I would say, 40, 50% of the knowledge you require to understand anything else. Okay. Uh, so, and then you have uh, this um, uh, this guy who was basically the uh, ex-head of Tesla self-driving unit. Mm -hmm. I mean, before that, he was obviously, he still is a great researcher. Mm -hmm. His name was Andrej Karapati. And he has this, you know, YouTube course on computer vision from like Stanford when he used to teach there. Okay. And now he started a course on LLMs, which is the science behind chat GPT. What is NLM? LLM. LLM. LLM stands for Large, large Language Models. Large language, large language model, which is basically what ChatGPT is. Okay. So now, since that's in the news, and you know, uh, you know, everyone wants to know about it, he has a great course on it. So okay. There are few. I mean, I'm doing English Karapati. There's also uh, MIT Open Courseware. Mm -hmm. MIT is, I mean, honestly, people don't need masters, people don't need bachelors. Honestly speaking, you just need it just for that sort of, uh, you know, that that tick mark, or you know, that sort mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, you've been accredited mm -hmm. to this. probably more dowry in India. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. No, you're not married. You should tell me. Huh? You're not. You're. you're I'm, I'm priceless. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It can be societal. Obviously. I mean, this. <laughs> I mean, I see a lot of people like, oh yeah, I got a master's, yeah, and what like. I know some of the uh, uh, engineering colleges in Bangalore. Yeah. They have uh, 800 seats. Yeah. AIML. Okay, let's. I I don't want to name the college. <laughs> but, uh, they have eight hundred seats. I don't know what 
uh, 800 people coming out of uh, uh, a, a badge like how i don't know where they'll get placed or what they'll be doing Forces. in <laughs> 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 placement guys are like at a subcourt live karna like <laughs> i i i mean like honestly uh i i i mean only they can only, only get places they work like 80 hours a week no 70 like hours have you <laughs> have you uh, come across the syllabus by any chance eiml so okay i have uh, i mean so generally this is my general uh, uh most okay let's just take youtube cuz i have come across some syllabus in um scam ai courses let's just say youtube you know you see these thumbnails of uh learn ai in 5 minutes or there'll be someone you know the mouth open up like that uh-huh. you know pointing at something like yeah i am scam full scam like uh-huh. oh what they, they see this is basically people are monetizing on the train nothing they, they'll just you know say some run of the mill stuff and people are going to subscribe to it and everyone's going to have run of the mill knowledge which is fair okay and this is the way people monetize but it's too much like right now i feel like everyone's doing ai everyone's speaking about ai everyone's ai engineer like for instance linkedin right i came across this profile the other day um you know he was i i, I was just thinking about sort process uh he's like oh let me see what the hype terms are ai okay okay and then quantum technology oh, okay okay i saw i saw his bio it said quantum ai i'm like wait do you know quantum technology and ai or do you know very little ai <laughs> <laughs> what what are you trying to do i'm like people Oh my god like all of all across LinkedIn is just like AI researcher uh, AI expert oh, oh and god. just throwing terminology around it's 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 really frustrating i i don't know why i get frustrated by it but it just just people throwing this term terminology around has just been <laughs> frustrating and i don't do anything about it i just probably speak about it in podcast but <laughs> <laughs> i it's, it's 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 people are just talking terms like yeah, everyone like um you know there'll be you know data scientists and you know they'll they'll give their own sort of taglines the mm-hmm. uh, people you know it's it's honestly in the professional world people are deciding their own last names <laughs> <laughs> that's what's happening <laughs> you have any funny ai stories uh funny something to do with self driving or like yeah i mean self driving uh uh again this wasn't uh, the company that i work for but uh, sf sf is a zoo in zoo in the sense like you see all kinds of humans Okay, you see people, um, you know, uh, well dressed. They're doing their jobs, and, and then you, be, you see people who are drugged up and just gone. Man, you know, they're just maniacs. They're just doing all kinds of random shit. As a third person observer, I find it quite entertaining. As long as I don't interact there, I don't get shot. I'm mm. good. I'm just gonna see, eat my ice cream and look from the corner. Mm. So once what happened, I was uh, literally just eating ice cream, mm. and um, so there's this car that pulls up uh, at the traffic light. this um no, homeless guy and he's completely gone mm. i don't know what he's on but mm. he's definitely on some uh, some some uh, cocktail of stuff and he's like he just stops in front of the car now people there have, i know how an autonomous car looks cuz it's very evident like it has like a bunch of sensors sticking out it's not very mm. subtle this guy stands in front of it is like go around me go around me mm. and human drivers always he saw this guy on idiot they just do a do a round they just made the mm. decision This guy didn't know what to do. Hmm. When when are you gonna when, when who's sitting who's which programmer is sitting and is gonna like oh what if some dumb dude comes and tells me to go around him? That's <laughs> that's an edge case which they might have thought of. They're like, how often is that gonna happen? Hmm. Hmm. Also the other angle is if you, this scenario happens with some uh, in unpredictable human, hmm. the safest decision might be the most boring. The safest decision is to do nothing, which is what I what the car did. He just stood there. This guy knew, and he's done it. I think for 15 minutes is just comical. He's just standing there. You go around, and then when the human driver goes up, hey, they went. No, you go around. I'm like, bro, you're speaking to a computer. Usko kya pata ki what are you saying? You go around it. You know, like what? <laughs> so the interaction of humans with AI, uh-huh. it's gonna be hilarious. And uh, you know, they've, they've, I've seen you know some uh, is you know, some you know AI can only it's only as good as data. So. Uh, Uh, someone prompts the image generator to say, "Give me a photo of an American mm. baby." Just gives you a photo of a baby, uh, and it's white, so there's some bias involved there. And then it says, "No, make it more American." And then gives a photo of a baby with a flag behind. It. No, no, make it more American. Then gives a photo of a baby that's eating a burger, a burger, a little obese, <laughs> and an American flag behind. It. So as it can make it more, make it more American. The final image is a baby holding a gun, and it's like full American flags around it. 
so these kind of things you know you can play around with it gen- generate all kinds of nonsense and the bias which is in the system kind of comes out yeah uh, in these uh, applications yeah. so yeah i mean i honestly haven't played a lot with chat gpt uh, cuz i have like real friends to talk to <laughs> but maybe someday i might i might like hey to kon hai to kya hai like <laughs> but i haven't played too much i've only used it as a like tool. does it answer such stuff uh, are you so that's actually a very good uh, i mean so back in the day i'm not saying like even like hmm. maybe, you know as in turing right hmm. um the the apple hmm. uh, so there was something called the turing test the turing test is basically uh, that times test of artificial general intelligence i might be wrong with the general intelligence part but the how to test if an ai is good or not hmm. so imagine there's a person who's talking to the ai through any medium hmm. and on one end there's a person and one end there's a computer or an ai mm. and during the conversation the human is unable to distinguish which is ai and which is human mm. that basically is a good or it passes the turing test okay back then passing the turing test was like the sort of uh, you know the 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 uh, the holy grail of ai mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, ai probably wasn't even that big a term but then that was a test that was uh, this thing so i i always wonder if chat gpt does a good job at that uh, and i and i feel like Uh, one thing that they've coded into the system hmm. is if you ask it have you um, you know are you a computer it says yes hmm. so just purely by that you can figure out it's a computer okay. so it fails the turing test so that's some weird you know software engineer sitting and playing around stuff <laughs> but some interesting things are that uh, that with chat gpt but i haven't experimented as much any yeah i can't feel as theories oh uh, yeah, i mean honestly i i'm the last person should ask it I am so biased towards anything that says biased against any article that says AI. I don't know. It's just become a personality trait of mine. If you say AI, I'm like, yeah, hey, I get lost. I don't want to get lost. <laughs> which is which is a good thing in most say in most scenarios, but it's bad when there's actually some information there. So personally, I don't subscribe to much hmm. of this conspiracy theory. So the great Instagram machine learning algorithm that's been tuned to me doesn't even show it to me. things like you know sam altman left because agi has come mm. into the picture that's a conspiracy theory as far mm. as i can mm. say mm. but uh, other stuff like um, you know i have a theory on like how conspiracy theories are born so you have authority bias so essentially you say uh, someone who's a really good actor okay and they're on a the podcast now this guy let's say i don't know who some some you know interviewer is going to say what do you think about ai and then this actor who has no sort of expertise on ai because he's a great actor because he has authority he will say that oh yeah we have to be careful dangerous state <laughs> so and that that becomes the gold standard of news like oh yeah shahrukh khan said ai is dangerous uh, and then everyone starts believing khan. it mm. what do you believe shahrukh khan on ai he's a great actor so i feel that is the root of all conspiracy theories obviously there's people who want to add conspiracy theories those people are there but the bigger root is people who have no sort of knowledge on this coming and telling us what can happen so so because of that i unsubscribe like i'm like ai yeah, no i don't want like sorry mm-hmm. and honestly because of that the bad thing that happened was i was probably a couple of weeks late into chat gpt okay uh because everyone was hyping this up and i mean people have been hyping stuff up for 7 years mm-hmm. so i'm so biased to say like this is also another piece mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. but i was wrong so obviously i'm being very honest here after saying this is not the right way to do it do it but i get visibly frustrated when people throw it on terminology so i just be like okay uh. okay we'll have another talk maybe after 6 months once uh, we are very close to agi yeah. what do you say 6 months on jupiter maybe <laughs> how far will it be 6 months close to back home i don't know right again if i subscribe to any of this you know conspiracy theories mm-hmm. i have a better idea agi ugly norm let's see <laughs> no or no but uh, i don't know it's uh, like it's i feel it's more i am i don't subscribe to fiction a lot okay uh, i just i just don't like like it as much as i like uh, being a little more realistic mm-hmm. if i was you know on that end and many people are they would they would like thinking about the future like elon is right like elon musk is what is your opinion on elon musk yeah <laughs> uh, elon you i like I, that guy No, I like him. I like him as a guy. I think he's really cool. I think he's doing some good work. But again, I feel he's also one of those people behind, you know, conspiracy. 
Um, I mean, he is definitely working closer to these systems, and that's probably. But he he's he's great at marketing, right? He's going to come and say stuff, and then people are going to subscribe to it because everyone's a fan of him. There, it's it's almost a cult uh, mm-hmm. cult following. So mm-hmm. that part I don't like about him, like the fact that he just like uh, you know comes and promises stuff, like self driving in specific, like their car, um, you know, is, is being shipped as fully self driving, but you know it's not that safe. But they're selling it as super safe. And they also add this line at the bottom saying that, hey, you're still in a responsible for the car. So a world where a car is fully self-driving or supposed to be fully self-driving, mm-hmm. our drivers get very complacent. We're like, hey, nothing's going to happen. So many days nothing's happened. Why is that happening? But when it happens, we are never ready. So a world where the human still needs to keep an eye on the car is not practical. It's dangerous. Okay. So in that, and then, you know, just Elon being Elon, mm-hmm. you know, just... Uh, futuristic stuff like, like for instance the cyber truck super cool looking mm-hmm. i don't know like i i don't know the the you you're talking about the car where he throws something and the window yeah it's it's so it's, it's it's being sold in the bay area uh, as of yesterday i think they released it so okay. I, I mean in america so um it's, was it's, that it's, test redone and yeah, yeah it was redone past it was redone so elon's great at selling stuff so so the the, the one of the tests that they did with the cyber truck was, I don't know why it's even relevant. He raced with the Porsche, mm. okay, and he won. Mm. To show that the thing is so fast, he was towing a Porsche while he raced a Porsche. <laughs> Which um, I mean, thinking about it, like, wow, what a, mm. what's so impressive? Mm. Is it a selling point? Not for me. Mm. If I want to buy a pickup truck, it's for different reasons. I'm not gonna drag race it. But he kind of. He uses all this sort of and a lot of theatricality. Yeah, now, okay. yeah, yeah. Which is. Which is probably a, that that is uh, for him to stay in the news. Yeah, most definitely, of it definitely, and he's great. I mean, made a lot of money out of yeah. it. Yeah, that way I don't really. I'm not a big fan of him. Anyway, thank you, Sid. Thanks, Vikas. Thank you.